It is the Riot Podcast. Welcome back, everybody. We missed everybody yesterday. We hope you had a non-working, mm. uh, anything-to-do Memorial Day. And we hope you had a great weekend, too. I, I didn't miss anybody that much. Oh, you mean just, yeah, it's, it's nice just to say. Just something you say. No, not yeah. just say, but it's nice to say. It's nice to mean it. Yeah. No, I don't mean it. Okay. No. <laughs> well, I do. So, sorry that he's just a uh, a bore. Yeah. <laughs> Which we'll talk about later. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> well, what, do you, what would you like to bring up, Isaiah? Yeah. Uh, you, was, you you listened to the whole show. I did. Yes. What's good about it? Uh, I thought the in the beginning when we brought up the typical summertime conversation of like who is the most attractive people, you know, uh-huh. and this year yet again for what feels like the tenth consecutive year, it has been dad bods are back yet again. For another rerun. But I forget. If there's enough guys who have dad bods and they're asking them in a study, then they'd probably say their own body type to make them feel better. Mm, you think, so right? The study kind of like but skewed we, that way. We did. It was seventy uh, percent of women, though. Mm. So uh, they, they were asking. Well, they don't the want to make their special they... someone who has a dad bod. Yeah, feel yeah. bad. <laughs> feel bad I, about it. I thought you were going to go in a different direction where it's like if so many men have dad bods, it makes it less unique. So it's if you want to. Like, it's just the same thing with Isaiah's mustache. Yeah. Less women like a mustache, probably, at least we assume. But when you have a mustache for that, since hardly anybody has one, yeah. for the women that do appreciate a mustache, that. Uh, like it uh, makes you better. That animal. much hotter. Uh huh. Right, exactly. Well, so well, maybe it's this though. Maybe as as women, which uh-huh. please chime in. Uh, <laughs> no, maybe as women, like if too many guys are too like just. Amazing, shredded. Uh-huh. just yeah. shredded and ripped. Yeah. Like that's, Isaiah. Then that's intimidating. <laughs> so maybe that's why we're choosing the dad bod, which is still oh. a fit person, but well. not as fit. So then you feel like it's just more like even ground. I think women need to understand they deserve better. They deserve better. <laughs> yeah. Don't be intimidated by uh, by an amazing body. Yeah. Yeah. You can, uh, it, don't talk, you you get what you want. Maybe just you also don't care and you just stay inside. So then there is fine. No problem. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> yeah. don't have to see anybody with their shirt off. No problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it makes it a lot, a lot easier that way. There is like that, like, uh, <clears throat> there's that little bit like of goodness and like comfort, I guess, like knowing like you can approach and it probably won't be that scary, you know? Yeah. Like it's just going to be, hey, uh, a nice, nice looking person. Yeah. Nobody not, likes to be denied. But so. not too much. <laughs> yeah. You know, not too intimidating. Yeah. We talked about that. We also talked about, uh, Hudson's weekend plans. Hey. He went out on a on a little fun uh, rendezvous of his own. A little, uh, which will help with the body. Jaunt yeah, exactly. To the ice cream festival. He is prepping for the dad bod summer. Yeah, oh, I'm a, I'm already there. You're already there. And good. there was uh, plenty of dad bods to be found at the ice cream festival. That's to to say the least. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about that, and then we also doubled down trying to dad bod it up by talking about hot dogs in the back end of the show. There it is. And one of the most pristine parts of the hot dog, which is the hot dog filler that happened to be uh, spread all over a highway in Pennsylvania. Yeah, it feels like uh, it's just disappointing when you see all of that hot dog stuff all over the road when it could have been in my belly. Yuck. Yeah. Well, actually, it also makes me nervous because I don't know if it's necessarily hot dogs, but like if you get like a brat or like a sausage, Uh what makes me more weirded out is is the casing like the oh outer yeah part uh-huh. of it and what that is so like I don't want to see I don't want to know oh, what's in there don't talk like that well but you probably cut the bread off of your sandwiches I mean no you probably cut the crust <laughs> off of your bread don't oh, you no it's the first one <laughs> <laughs> yeah I have a, a a problem though if it's like the you know intestines and stuff so but it's, it's, they don't do that yeah usually that's what the casing no. is it is it's it's a synthetic fibrous thing that they it's basically plastic uh-huh. you're eating plastic isn't that better than the intestines i guess as long as it's recycled <laughs> yeah. either way if i'm eating a hot dog i'm not gonna feel good about myself afterwards anyway no you're right yeah you just have to talk yourself out of even thinking about that well, on that note it's snack time for us so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah let's there bring we it go. in <laughs> i think i got some hot dogs waiting for me that's right casing and all <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you guys for listening enjoy the podcast enjoy see you guys Don't say we didn't warn you. This is the worst of the riot. Maybe you got to spend some time out at the pool. Maybe, but maybe not. Uh Uh-oh. Because uh, it turns out that uh, many, 
many pools, public pools over the weekend were not able to open. Oh, because, because of a lifeguard shortage. Oh, you know, I saw a couple articles that if you are a lifeguard, you can actually make some pretty good money right now uh-huh. because there is a shortage. So you really know your worth. Yeah. <laughs> if you got out of lifeguarding. Get back in. Yeah. I didn't know, but uh, you have to actually be certified to be a lifeguard. Sure. So it turns. So that is why it seems that uh, there's so many places that are looking for lifeguards because there's not enough people certified anymore that are still doing lifeguarding uh, over the pandemic. They had to slow down, of course, on all of their verification, their like training courses yeah. to uh, get people ready to lifeguard. And then people maybe moved on from lifeguarding. Right. And so there's just not enough who have taken up the sport of it. Yeah. So uh, for a lot of places, that means that they just you cannot open the public pools because there's not anybody to be the lifeguard on hand. And uh, that was the case in, for example, Philadelphia, only 18 of their 65 public pools, their uh, city-run pools, only 18 of them were able to open. Out of 65? Out of 65. Oh, you'll feel that one. And they're saying that, so this is not something that's going to go away anytime soon because yeah. obviously all summer long, you're going to see pools that maybe you're, like if you're in your city, they will rotate which pools are open on which days or reduced hours, all stuff like that. And so it's going to be a problem all summer long. Well, you know what that means. What does that mean? That means you go to the store and you buy one of those inflatable pools. Uh huh. And that's your community pool for a while. Yeah, you don't I guess need so. a lifeguard there. No, you just <laughs> uh, you make it work at your own house and uh, do the best that you can. Or you could get into lifeguarding. Oh, you could. I think I could do it. Yeah, you, you, you want g- to? Well, give me a whistle. Yeah. And I think that's all I need. This isn't the type of job where you go in with a confident wave and just thinking that, you know, like you got to go back into swim lessons. No. What you you got to pass the classes. How often you think at a public pool somebody's actually in danger? Enough to where you at least need to be certified. Uh-huh. And that means you would have no. to go. Okay, so right. You'd have to go back and get your swimming lessons. Uh-huh. And there's no one to teach the swimming lessons. <laughs> That's actually. Because the, the, there's a shortage. They are actually saying that. That that is. Uh, it sounds like a joke, but it is true that they're afraid this is going to be a long term issue. Because with less lifeguards, lifeguard there can't be enough lifeguards to do the lifeguard training courses. Yeah. So that's going to be a recurring issue. And uh, so good luck. Yeah, actually, Bernard J. Fisher the second, which does not sound like the director of health and safety at the Lifeguard Association, but that's who it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says there's going to be increased drownings because people aren't able not just to learn how to lifeguard, but people aren't able to take swim lessons because you're supposed to be a lifeguard or trained to do swim lessons as well. So uh, basically, I guess nobody's supposed to get in the water anymore. You're not allowed to. In Chicago, they say they employ about 163 year-round lifeguards. Mm -hmm. And then as of a few weeks ago, they've not yet hired any seasonal lifeguards. And then they talked about needing uh, 587 lifeguards to, to like, staff beaches and pools. Uh And they have 254. All right. So they need you. I'm ready to get out there. They need you to get... Already, I think the uh, you got to rethink the training at this point. Again, uh, we're not at we're not in the ocean. There's not sharks. It's just a public pool. You still have to make sure no one's drowning on your watch. I can do that. It's not that hard. You think you can, but you never had training to show you that you can't. Maybe I don't need. Maybe you don't need training because it's so simple. Is this hey, how are you drowning? No. Hey, All right, we're good to said, go. Is this how you're going to argue at the pool? Because they're not going to have you. They're, no, this is the bossy lifeguard attitude that they're looking for. They're going to make Somebody you supervisor. Yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can. I can do it. Sign me up. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's going to work. I, and I can do it after the show. I've got plenty of time in my schedule. <laughs> I don't. I don't see the issue. Oh, you're going to get a nice tan. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. I'm probably going to get sunburned. Actually, it's the worst part of the job. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Did you, speaking of watching things, watch any Stranger Things over the weekend? All right, I plan to every night. I did. And oh, then I saw. You're going to look me in the face. And I'm going to tell you that I didn't watch any of you it. You didn't watch a second of Stranger Things. I'm so disappointed in myself. But listen, every time I went online somewhere, someone was talking about like they were watching it. Uh-huh. And I felt like I was overwhelmed with everybody else watching Stranger Things uh-huh. and Top Gun. <sighs> That when it came time to me watching it, not only was it too dark out, everybody said the first episode's really scary. Oh. (laughs) It it definitely takes more of a horror turn 
than I remember Stranger Things from the previous season. So I just, I didn't start yet. I even was going to watch it last night. No, I know. You're not going to watch it at I, all now. I am too. I've watched I all the other that. seasons. I, I just, know, but past my performance doesn't, or past result, no. Past, something past doesn't indicate what happens in the future. Did you watch any? I watched five episodes. You did? I thought that was pretty good. Five out of the seven is amazing. Five out of seven. I did pretty darn good. And uh, I'll tell you, man, I did not, uh, after such a long wait for for getting this new season, I thought, there's no way. Like, I'm going to watch this, and I'm going to lose interest, you know? The, and you kept going. Yeah. And uh, and it's actually delivered. It is. It might be the it's hard to remember back to the first season. I know I did not like the second season as much. Yeah. Uh, but it it might be the best of the Stranger Things I've watched. Well, does anybody else, did you get through all seven episodes of the volume one? Or did you not start them yet and you're like me, but you're eagerly uh-huh, anticipating uh-huh. the day that you do? Or how many episodes did you guys get through? Yeah. I thought I did. I definitely was impressive. They're yeah. Long. I was not expecting. They are. I know we talked about uh, leading up to it. How the the run times came out for, and it was like, oh, the last episode of volume one is going to be like an hour and a half or whatever. They're and then, all over an hour. Yeah, that, that's what I was, I wasn't expecting every episode to be so long. And so I also definitely was not expecting to be able to find the time, even on a holiday weekend, to get through so much. But once you watch one it hooks you in. You're like, well, I'm going to make the time. Well, David says it's good, Hudson. That seventh episode. <laughs> ah, yes, I'm getting there. So you haven't been there yet. <laughs> I'm getting there. I, I have other plans for tonight, so it's not happening tonight. But uh, I bet you sometime this week, the Stranger Things will be finished off for me. And then, But I know, I know, too, that they're, they've ended every episode even kind of on a cliffhanger moment. Yeah. And that's just the episodes. Forget about when you get to get episode seven. Which it's going to be a massive cliffhanger that you end up to wait another month for. Well, a lot of so, people watch it over tough. the weekend. So, was, again, how many episodes did you get through? I do have to point out, though, we're now four seasons into uh, Stranger Things, yeah. four tragedies, uh, you know, four different instances of tragedy have befallen the town of Hawkins. When's at it going to wrap po- up? Well, it's just at what point would the people just leave the town? I know. I don't understand. Like, how many people have to be uh, disfigured by a demon existence to. Before it's like, you know what? Why don't we just pick up the town? Let's go next door. Let's just, go to uh, <laughs> Philburg, Indiana. Can we just go somewhere else, just please? right next door. I People have mentioned that before. But I think because there's so much time like for us to watch the seasons uh-huh. in between, it feels like this has gone way long. <laughs> it does. It just at, at some point. But I guess what? They have. So we have volume two. Two episodes that come out like a month from now. That's in July. And then there's supposed to be one more season. That's really supposed to be it, right? Mm-hmm. So eventually, I, I, I think that's when either everybody dies or finally the people realize we got to move out of this. We got Hawkins, Indiana, burn it to the ground. <laughs> Nothing good is coming from here. We're moving. Yes, we're heading a, a, a couple miles over. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Well, it's time for the uh, the annual survey that comes out every summer uh, at the beginning of the summer that tells you if you're a man, you don't have to feel bad about having your shirt off. Because because it, no matter what you look like, evidently uh, everybody is a well, all women generally seem to be attracted to it. So no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, We have a survey here. This is from uh, Advanced Dermatology. They surveyed over 1,100 Americans, uh, asking them a bunch of questions about dad bods. And they Even if you're not a dad. Yeah. And so, (laughs) actually, I did want to ask about that. So, uh, they say that 70% of women are a fan of the dad bod, according to this survey. Yeah. That's uh, most women are attracted to. To a dad bod. Mm-hmm. Uh, can first of all, can you have a dad bod if you're not a dad, or yeah. does that change? Yeah. No, I think that's just a it's just a style of body. Uh huh. Yeah. But do you have to be maybe a certain age? No, no, I don't think so. So, you, so Isaiah, you could rock a dad bod. Many think, of my friends have dad bods. And <laughs> that, do you think that they've had dad that? bods for years, <laughs> like legitimate years. They've had dad bods it's since we're probably like now. 17 years old. Are they proud of that? <laughs> yes, very. That's crazy. I I uh I don't know. I am I does my dad do I have a dad bod? 
No I, one's. I, I don't think. I'm we not going to comment on that. You mean? That's a pass on that. You guys pass. don't want to admit that I'm Next good question. looking. Next question. That I, I have a, tra- a body that's attractive to I 70% of women. I think it's in our handbook somewhere. We're not allowed to say that. <laughs> I'm asking you. It's okay. No, you can say giving, it. No. I'm Next wave question. All, no. uh, Next question. All rights to sue. <laughs> in the you have. 30 seconds to tell me. I don't want to Do I meeting. have a dad bod? No. <laughs> I've never seen you with your shirt off, so uh-huh. if you want to come in one morning with, with your shirt I off, then I'll tell right you. Now. I don't want you to do that either. <laughs> I don't. I was hoping that you would fry, shy away at that. Okay, now I wonder, so this oh, this past weekend, a lot of people were seeing Top Gun, and have you seen everything online with all that, with the uh, with all the shirt off things from the videos? No. So, like, everybody's really into now, like, that sort of really cut beach sort of style. Uh-huh. Like, you're really fit. Okay. So maybe though this is the summer of not dad bods, but like the Top Gun bods. So well, you, you might have to now work more towards that. I don't know. I think that uh, see the, the fun thing about the dad bod is it's attainable to literally everybody. Everybody. Every man, anyways. <laughs> How come there's no? I, I don't like this. If there was a like a reverse survey about women, mm-hmm. it wouldn't be like oh the mom bod. You know, that I don't think I don't think that would do you think 70 percent of men, if you gave like the whatever the woman equivalent of the dad bod would be, 70 percent of men would be like, yeah, I'm all in on that. Yes. You think so? I think that these surveys are just so silly because I think no matter who you are, there's someone that's going to find you attractive for the most part. Exactly. So, yeah. So I feel like the majority of people, you probably think people don't find you attractive, but they 100 percent do. And so when you're walking around, like I'd say. That everybody has similar tastes in people, but there's just a little bit different. It's like across the board. So pretty much any style, anything that you look like, there will be someone that finds you attractive. Yeah, there's so you have somebody, have but not seventy percent of people, though. You never know. I mean, it's just really about how you, whatever your body is, how confident you are. So you think we're all of us are walking around out there, and uh, if you surveyed seven. Uh, uh, Ten people, seven of them would say, yep, you're attractive. I would say uh, nine and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I would say ten, all of them. Wait, hang on. Let me get the how humble are we survey yeah. <laughs> going. How many out of ten <laughs> would say Isaiah's humble? So let's see. One, uh, me. <laughs> it says nearly three, uh, 73% of people say having a dad bod just means having uh, they're fit, but they have a little extra weight. That, mm. I feel like that's hard to define. Like, well, I think they just defined it right there. When, yeah, but what does fit mean? Fit means like you're still healthy and stuff. Like you're still, uh, but you're just not not shredded. Like you're not. I I think that uh, that the that the definition of dad bod they're going with here is not what is really the dad bod. Mm. Because the dad bod you gotta like I think you gotta have a little bit of a paunch for a dad bod, and that's a not fit. Yeah, paunch. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Continue on. <laughs> That's it. That's my point. That you have to have a little bit of a podge. Okay. Or it's not a dad bod. So that you're judging dad dad, bods. I am. You know what? I accept all dad bods. If you think you have a dad bod, you're more than welcome to tell me you you have a dad bod. You can't claim to have a dad bod or you can't claim to be attracted to the dad bod if you don't understand what the dad bod is. It's an exclusive club. (laughs) I think you're just looking too much into it. You can't, uh, you can't be club. super fit and and say oh, I'm in the I'm the dad bod mm. and try to get women off of that. So maybe people who are super fit but they are just wanting to not seem so you know like proud of their body like too uh-huh. much. Oh, so now they're insulting the dad bod. It could be- <laughs> They're saying they're dad bods, but they're not. Yeah, I, they they are not allowed in the club. As you mine. know, I liked when dad bods were out because they weren't so exclusive. Back in the day, they were like, oh, yeah, anybody can have a dad bod. Uh-huh. Now they're like, you're just not dad bod enough. Like, you're <laughs> close, but you're not quite you're there. Not I am the dad bod gatekeeper. Okay. Uh, because I, I claim to have a dad bod. Just everybody keep your well, shirts on. I don't know on. if you've got, I don't know I'm, if you really fit no, the club. I've got the punch. You, you said you didn't want me to show you. I will show you the punch. It seems as if you're kind of on the borderline dad bod. I don't no. know if you fit in. There's I am not too fit to have a dad I don't know. If if I was allowed to take my shirt off, you'd see. Uh, We're not, though, so let's leave them on. (laughs) This is Radio U's Worst of the Riot. Did you do anything uh, interesting over the... Long weekend, Nikki? No, which was perfect. Nothing at Just all. Just perfect. Well, that's great because uh, if you did, it would take up 
time that I could tell about the interesting thing I did. Oh, did you do something? I well, did. I feel bad because like Isaiah out of the three of us does stuff every weekend. Uh-huh. And so he went to the Indy 500. Right. It's hard to top that. We're like, that's too much. Uh-huh. You know, it's, it was a holiday weekend. I just maybe like a cookout. But, yeah. Uh, I thought we planned on us not doing anything. No, I had to do something. So it's hard to compete with Isaiah, but I did. I didn't go to the Indy 500. I did go to a small town ice cream festival. Hey! Yeah. Oh, you party animal. Yeah, oh, it was uh <laughs> it was wild. The the ice cream festival, I don't know what my favorite part was. If it was the waiting in line oh, or the waiting that. in line to wait in line. Oh, just wonderful. It was so crowded. Yeah. And it, you can tell it was one of those things that uh it's in a small town and so out kind of in the country and so everybody this is like the thing that goes on. For like a 100 mile radius, it seems like. That's their big thing. And so everybody shows up there. So it was incredibly crowded. I did get some good ice cream. Uh, and surprisingly, not too expensive either. I Do was impressed you, by that. Because I envision at an ice cream festival, like you get a lot of little samples throughout uh-huh. the day. Or no, did you just get like one big one and that was it? I got a uh, I got a milkshake and that was it. I'm, I'm much more of a milkshake person than just eating straight up ice cream anyways. Yeah. So uh, I went for the what milkshake. Uh, cookies and cream. That's a good choice. Yeah, I wanted, you know what? I was even disappointed because I went to the ice cream thing. And uh, I really wanted an like an orange, like a kind of like Arby style, yeah, like the cream sickle style. And they did not have that flavor, so I had to go with uh, I went with cookies and cream instead, which was one of the best milkshake I've ever had. Are you gonna go online and leave a bad review for uh, yeah, the ice cream the festival? Ice cream fe- you know what? Uh, <laughs> my one bad review would not put a dent in this ice cream festival's reputation because there were so many people there, seemingly having a good time, except. For one guy, like I said, everybody was waiting in line. Uh, there was one food truck that uh, that way I wound up getting food. Yeah. Uh, which it was a horrible, horrible choice for my health. I got a a burger with four cheeses on it and an egg. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, so much cholesterol. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Uh, it's a festival. I did collapse on my way to the car. But, uh, but thankfully you had your milkshake. <laughs> yes, that, um, that canceled it out. It revived it, you. It, exactly. But uh, there was the... That food truck, it was taking a really long time. And I will admit that the people at the food truck did not seem to have a very good attitude. Oh, as far it. as like one guy came up to complain. He's like, I've been waiting 30 minutes. And uh, as soon as he walked away, I could hear the people in the food truck like bad mouthing this guy. Aww. It's like, you made him wait 30 minutes. And it wasn't even like there was a super long line of people. So that was a little upsetting. Yeah. But you know, the other fun thing about going to uh, like small town festivals like this is it's you know, there's the ice cream, but then half of it is just all the little people that make their own crafts yeah. and dips and lawn ornaments and stuff like that selling stuff. So there's just, you just walk through tables and tables worth of signs that are like, home is where you feel most comfortable pooping or whatever, you know? <laughs> Did you buy anything? <laughs> I bought that sign. Yep. <laughs> Hung it up. Yeah, it's on my front door. Oh, that's nice. But that I do enjoy just seeing all of that and thinking who actually does buy this. But it's big. It has to be big business because mm-hmm. there's so many of those vendors, and they what? They're not losing money going to that thing. Well, you know? they they see you come in and they're like, "Who's this city boy?" Yeah, coming they, to our ice cream they, festival. I stuck out like a. Actually, no. You know what? As much as I uh, am, I've grown into more of a city slicker. Uh, I still dressed the part of I looked right at home, you know, <laughs> your flannels with and my dad bod and my trucker hat and everything. <laughs> I, I did not stick out. Nobody could pick me out. Well, that's fun that you chose to go to an ice cream festival. Yeah, it was uh, it was a good time. It was a good idea. I, I don't know if I'll go to that ice cream festival again, though. Mm. Once is sometimes enough. Well, if, maybe if I start driving there now and get in line now, <laughs> I'll actually uh, be able to get there early enough to have a good time next year. You know what you could also do? What's that? Uh, you can just pick up your phone order a selection of ice creams uh-huh. go to a place and just pick them up and have your own festival yeah, and uh, buy some bad signs off of amazon perfect etsy would be great uh, let's it, support you know local local artisans vendors. for yep. that uh-huh. find more riot content online riot.radiou.com
I was hoping you read the story because I haven't looked at oh, it. Oh, I've read the entire uh, thing front to back. I could tell you who wrote it. I could probably tell you when it happened. The all problems. the good stuff. <laughs> yes, I've read this thing three times over by now. Well, considering since um, Hudson is out of the room, uh, all of us here, most famous and well known for his hot dog eating. He just loves hot dogs. That's uh -huh. like his, his snack. It yeah. might come in and out of like number one spot for your favorite snack, but it's back and I, you enjoy them. I figured that's why you shared this story. Yes, it is. I mean, I think the picture alone oh, the can tell you amazing. the entire story. That so is, is this, the story. Is this what's inside hot dogs? Yeah, that's what's inside of a hot dog. Is that that pretty, it looked pretty good, right? What is that green stuff, though? Okay, so hold on. Time out. So uh, what we're looking at here is a picture of, in Pennsylvania on the highway, a truck, like a tractor trailer, crashed sp uh, and spilled out. It was full of hot dog filler. It was a big hot dog truck. Uh, and so I wish it was the wiener mobile. I know me too. <laughs> hundred pounds of hot dog filler spilled all over the highway. So now my question: What is that green stuff? There's nothing green in a hot dog. Well, you don't know though. Maybe the green stuff cooks out, or maybe that's just like the packaging, like the casing around uh, it. Oh yeah. Before it goes into like a hot dog casing. Yeah, that could uh, what that just like the they put it in a green bag for some reason. Yeah, a big green. Thing. That's what I think too. It has to be like whatever the casing is. And just to circle back here, it is fifteen thousand pounds. What did I say? You said fifteen hundred, which is a large <laughs> That's difference. Still a lot though. Either it's a way, lot. It's yeah, fifteen hundred is a lot. Dude, but fifteen thousand is so much. If somebody out there listening closely, they're like fifteen hundred. What's the big deal? A hot deal? dog filler get out the basement right now. Uh -huh, exactly. And it's bad because if you've ever been around Pittsburgh, like the roads there are always under construction, and there's uh -huh. always traffic and it's just always a mess and they say that that part was closed for several hours last week oh, and no. you're like oh i wonder if it was a horrible accident no it was the hot dog filler the truck just um crashed and it spilled so they had to clean it up is it on the turnpike yeah it was so you have to pay to wait in line to, <laughs> to see this hot dog stuff spilled everywhere and you can't even take any of the filler with you you know like you take a little uh like tupperware thing and just scoop it in and drive past yeah they they probably had that cordoned off so you couldn't uh nobody could just run up and steal the yeah hot i bet dog they're gonna filler. use it now i bet Aww. they'll just package it back up and just toss it right, right in your hot dogs you know well, the uh, for out. sale hot dog section uh -huh. these are the sale hot dogs oh yeah, yeah the clearance hot dogs so what what happened with this what i assume mean? they just crashed Single at vehicle? Yes. Well, the truck, it lost control. They said that he was speeding. Oh, man. I don't know. Maybe it was like, a, what if it was... What if it was an inside job or something? Like, what if this was intentional? To ruin the hot dog filler? Yeah, they, for insurance purposes, probably. Well, then. This is, the trucker's in on a scam. That's here. a whole new world if that's what you're scamming people on. Yeah. They say hot dog filler is a mixture of beef, pork, and poultry, water, added fat, dry milk, cereal, and a couple of preservatives. Mm, All the good stuff. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. Sounds pretty good. And some leaves and debris yeah. and glass. <laughs> Whatever else they can toss in there just to fill it up. I'm Lots just, of fun stuff. I'm just upset. I, I wish the truck would have uh, exploded into flames. You wish it would have exploded here? Or? Well, well, sure, yeah. I mean, if uh, if a tr dog truck wants to just pull up at the Radio U thing and tip over, I could help take care of that. But see, we're saying it wrong. We want a hot dog truck, yeah. not a hot dog filler. No, nobody truck. wants the well, filler. Well, that's what I mean. I just, I wish it would have exploded into flames. Look, it's already all the, uh, it's already on a stick. So it's just like roasting it over a fire. Gross. It would have been delicious. Well, I'm sorry for the accident. Instead, it's just cold hot dog filler. Well, a, who wants that? That's quite a spill right there. Well, have you seen that I uh, I have broken out the hot dog toaster? Mm. Oh, you brought the toaster out? Yeah. You have your hot dog toaster Isaiah's here? Isaiah's seen me using it. I did. I saw him using it on Friday. I came up with a don't new you, strategy for it. Don't you feel like it's a circus when he brings that out? Yeah. It, you put hot dogs in it and then hot dog buns. Uh-huh. I'm putting uh, clown makeup on. There's music. It, well, it does feel I, like a circus. I feel like you're one. One step from bringing out a cotton candy machine. <laughs> oh, I would never That's do next. that. That's next. That is next. Candy. But no, I I, uh, I realized that every time I used to use the hot dog toaster, it would make the whole building smell like hot dogs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, funny thing, when you're like setting hot dogs on fire, it's basically like a hot dog candle. So what I <laughs> what I did was I've started turning on the vent fan in the over the oven to help with the smell. Yeah, so nobody's noticed a hot dog smell, have you, Chris? No, nope, Isaiah. No, aren't you yeah. clever? Uh huh. So I'm I'm doing everybody a favor. Problem solved. I figured it out. <laughs> Solutions oriented guy. This is the riot radio. You. I've got a little uh, opportunity here for you. How does uh, $20,000 sound? Well, bowl me over. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what if I, I told you all you need to do 
to get $20,000 is moved to West Virginia. Oh, are they trying to entice people? They are trying to get people to move in to uh, to West Virginia. I feel like they, or it was maybe Virginia, uh-huh. have done this before. Uh, I, I think this program started up a while ago. I know there's been various cities around the country mm-hmm. that, uh, and I remember, uh, I believe it was Natchez, Mississippi, yeah, was one, one of them. them. Uh, but I feel that this amount of money is definitely more than most other places have offered. So West Virginia recently launched a program they call Ascend West Virginia, where they are willing to pay people. They're thinking remote workers, right? Mm-hmm. If you can work from anywhere anyways, why are you staying in many ca- what many cases is an expensive city uh, where you could move to West Virginia, save a bunch of money on your rent, still do the same work, and they're trying to sell you on you could also marry your cousin. No, that's not in there. But it is true. They, you can, you could at least do that in West Virginia fairly recently. I don't think they're highlighting that. Uh, why not? <laughs> they're not. If, if they're not highlighting it, why don't you just make it illegal? Because your cousin has to move too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's a great point. That's so, a big roadblock. I guess in past incentive moving sort of things, they were paying you money to, you're right, move into a specific town. Uh-huh. But in this case, all of West Virginia welcomes you. It's open you. for business. And so well, you normally have to do a few things, though, to actually qualify. Yeah, there is actually some caveats. Now, they do want you to move into West Virginia, but they have three cities that they've uh, picked out. Lewisburg, which is uh, more southern West Virginia, Mm -hmm. actually near the Virginia border a little bit. Shepherdstown, which is, uh, that's more towards Maryland uh, in the northern part of West Virginia. And then there, I believe, and then there's Morgantown, which is uh, over more to the western West Virginia part. That's where their biggest, uh, that's where West Virginia University is. So that's kind of the more, if you, that's a college town. Yeah. If you'd like to go there. They also, so they're selling you on that. Uh, They say that it would be a great place for you know, if you love the outdoors, if you like hunting deer or uh, going to state parks, stuff like that, there's lots to oh, explore. None of that sounds Virginia. exciting. What about skiing? No. What about very like not Utah and Colorado skiing, but skiing nonetheless? No, not at all. Not for you. No. Well, you're also not a remote worker. No, and I, you know, the money is tempting though. They say that remote workers would initially get ten thousand dollars to move mm-hmm. to one of. Okay, so it's not literally the whole state, yeah. but to one of those three pilot areas, uh-huh. and then you'll receive. Another two thousand for the second year. Um, the straight now, cash is part of the incentive package, mm-hmm. so you want to make sure you realize, like, when you're actually getting the cash, how long you have to live there. Ten thousand dollars up front isn't bad, but you might be thinking that what Nikki just listed, we said twenty thousand. That doesn't equal. But then ten thousand and two thousand. Where's the other eight thousand? This is where the catch comes in. Uh, at least one of the catches, it seems, because the eight thousand is uh, for different vouchers to be able to get you to do like the outdoor stuff that they're trying to promote, oh. like the ski resorts and the state parks and their outfitters and stuff oh, like I that. I don't want that. I, I know, money. right? That's like, ha- right. Just give me, eight, if you got $8,000 anyways, why not give me $8,000 of cash that I can spend not doing outdoor well, things? Well, you have to always know the details for yeah. it. They say that basically in West uh, Virginia that they've had a lot of people leave the state. Mm-hmm. And this is how they say they say, how do we plug the bathtub and refill it up? <laughs> That's their analogy with it. So they're trying to refill West Virginia up. I also like the idea uh, where where they say when people have a high, like the people that are from West Virginia mm-hmm. say that maybe graduate from West Virginia University. When you have a highly desirable skill and are highly educated, they have economic and social mobility. They can go anywhere so they can leave West Virginia. So they don't stay. So they don't want to stick around if you basically, if you're smart. <laughs> you don't want to leave. Uh, you do want to leave West Virginia. I don't know. I uh, I feel for the per- the people that are running this because you know it's like if somebody made you the head salesman for expired cheese, like what would you do with it? You would. It would be a tough tough job. That's right. So they're they're doing the best they can. So twenty thousand. Some of that being um, with credit. an ast- yeah an asterisk with if, it. if you want to move to West Virginia. <laughs> Thanks for watching the worst of the riot. Since you made it this far, you might as well like, subscribe, and check out riot.radiou.com for even more More riot. riot.